Hello, I'm Don. And hi, I'm Cindy, and welcome to Pearls of Liberty, March 17th, 2012. Happy St. Patrick's Day. And we know that you're all uh, ready to go out and eat some uh, Jigs dinner and drink some green beer, so we won't take up too much of your time today. Uh, the first item that we want to mention is, uh, and if you listen to Alex Jones, you're aware of this, Panetta, the Secretary of Defense, was recently uh, before the troops and he required that all the U.S. Marines disarm before he would go among them. Absolutely outrageous because if, the and these were Marines, and if Marines are taught anything, it's don't go anywhere without your weapon, have your weapon with you at all times. And this really tells us that they're afraid, the, the, the power structure is afraid that Panetta's going to get arrested. Alex Jones was calling for Panetta's arrest based on his appearance before the, the Senate Armed Services Committee saying that congressional authorization is not required in order for a, a declaration of war or for troops to be engaged and uh, Panetta's committing treason big time and this is is going so that it's to the point now that the rank and file military and especially Marines can see what's happening and they're disarming them so that they don't arrest him. I don't seriously think that they think that his life is in danger but in order to do something like arrest Panetta you need to be able to have arms to be able to defend yourself if somebody should object to you doing so. So this is where we're at. This is escalated to a very, very high level. And uh, it's actually encouraging that, that the tyrants are showing their hand. The, the best way to expose a dictatorship is to force the tyrants to act like one. And that is happening. It's amazing. And this week, also, the, uh, all the Coney 2012 uh, hubbub has escalated even further. And our hero, George Clooney, was arrested for the sake of the cause. This is such a scam, such a stunt. And the, the good news is, is that it's not flying. They're really, really having to pull back from this major move on the African continent that the power structure wanted to, to do as this big diversion to get everybody's eyes off of wherever, whatever's going on inside of our country and all the shenanigans that are going on with banking and looting of the country. Get, them, get people occupied with a war, chasing this warlord that hasn't been seen in six years and is, is a minor figure in a minor area of, of a country when he was uh, known to be alive. And George Clooney performs this stunt in front of the Sudan embassy uh, protesting, and the intent is for him to get arrested. Why? So that that will bolster the cause. So he gets arrested, and there's all these sympathetic voices going, yay, yay, we'll, we're going to overcome. So the, the elites know how propaganda works. They know they need to portray the establishment as the underdog and fighting for the little guy in Africa, which is the, absolutely the opposite of what it's doing. The AFRICOM cause is not to make the world better for the the people in Africa is to grab their land, it's to kick them off their land, it's to rob the resources of that continent and it's getting exposed, it's not flying, people are seeing it. There was a, a young girl that is a high school student that produced a video seen by three million people exposing the Coney 2012 and th that whole agenda. The kids are getting it. So we're now at the point where this is kind of like in Hitler's last days before the bunker where the only people that believed him are the people that uh, were the, the kids that believe the propaganda and even some of the kids are waking up so this is really really interesting the 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 last illusion is gonna be that these guys are really in charge because they don't it's all the the 
puppet strings being pulled, the man behind the curtain running the show. The real power is in the hands of the people. That's why they always have to do these propaganda things to get the approval of the people who aren't paying attention. But people are paying attention. Things are really looking good. And I think you said that uh, in the Hitler Youth, since they were they were the the last ones to believe Hitler, but when they started to wake up, it was pretty much over. Yeah. So when the young people are waking up, that's you can hear the. You can hear, listen for the other uh, shoe to drop, and uh, an aspect of, of George Clooney being there, and you might think, what a great humanitarian! He really cares about people, or you might think, whoa, is George Clooney a member of the elite? Well, let's remember he is an actor, and he may have been, may have been paid. This may be an acting job for him. And sometimes we refer to the film Wag the Dog. And if you haven't seen it or haven't seen it recently, this is a great time to see that film. Because uh, a crisis that is manufactured to divert attention away from something that's happening in this country that's real is actually produced as a film would be produced. They hire a producer. Now, George Clooney is an actor. Is it possible that they might have hired him to act this part? And we, we really need to be wise as serpents and innocent as doves. And consider that some of these things may be going on. And as Don said, hopefully everybody is finally getting the message. These guys are playing with our minds that so much of what they do and say is completely removed from reality. It's never going to be everybody, but the numbers are rapidly increasing. And the, the exposure that this uh, high school students video got was awesome. And uh, I'd like to point out that Coney didn't necessarily have to be paid for an acting job. That could, this could be a price he's paying to keep his acting career. It could be that he it's conditional that he fall into line with these scenarios as they come to him in order for him to continue to get good roles. Such a thing is not at all beyond thinking that that's the way Hollywood works. They, they have to pay their dues to the power structure in order to get the acting roles that they do. And I, I also want to mention two other films um, that ha have come to mind. One is Dave. Uh, where the, the president has had a stroke and they hire a look-alike to stand in and that's that's the United States and there's also Moon Over Parador which is actually a very very fun film to watch it's Richard Dreyfuss and it's it's very entertaining and he, he also is an actor who was hired to play the role of a dictator in a banana republic um, because the dictator has un unexpectedly died and they just want to hold things together. So th this idea uh, is, is an interesting one to pursue and these, these films are also entertaining on their own. So if you're bored this weekend, maybe you can pick one up. You're mentioning that the dictators made me think of this latest Obama executive order that I just saw this morning. That's another one's been passed that gives the executive branch of the government full control over all of the resources in the country, all of the resources in the country in a state of emergency. Well, guess what? You know, basically you can declare an emergency whenever you want. Stage, that's the whole point. Stage some false flag that makes it so that the whole country's in a state of emergency and bam, you've got your dictatorship. And you don't even need to be a banana republic. What has been practiced around the world is happening here in America. And should that make me discouraged and upset? Well, yes, on one level, but on another level, I'm actually really encouraged because, like I said, these guys are exposing themselves. And as they expose themselves, they are going to fall. They're, the People in America will not stand for a dictatorship for long. We're not. You might think that the average dumbed-down people will, but there are enough well beyond the three to five percent in the that it took for the original American Revolution in order to 
uh, actually stop this thing from happening, to be able to stop this rollout from tyranny. We've, we've got the kind of numbers that make it so that they have to pull back from their African invasion. Otherwise, their plan is completely exposed. I don't believe that an awakening in America is actually going to completely stop the rollout of the global government, but it's going to slow it down considerably, and it's going to give us a lot of breathing room to educate more people about liberty, and that's happening. That's great, and if worst comes to worst, we should be done with all of this by March 31st, right? <laughs> because that is the deadline that the white dragons and the white hats and all those good guys. There needs to be a cowboy brigade, too, that's a uh, white 10-gallon hats or something. that <laughs> U.S. Marshals, maybe, that ride in at the last second and save the day. But according to Benjamin Fulford, March 31st is the deadline for a lot of this mess as far as sociopaths ruling to be cleaned up. So we're hoping to see that. What that actually is, that deadline is for the leaders of the cabal to uh, to present themselves openly, to confess to their crimes, and uh, otherwise their lives are going to get very miserable. I don't necessarily think it's going to happen that they're going to cave as Fulford and the White Dragons are asking them to do. I do think their lives are going to get more difficult. And we've already seen these global banking res resignations that have added, I think, maybe even as much as a hundred more this week happening all across the globe of, of corrupt central bank officials and assistants, etc. And so this is a massive cleanup that's going on of the the ruling elite around the world. And there are people rising up that are ready to stand for an, uh, a just economic system, one that's based on merit and not based on fraudulent derivatives and that's based on real assets instead of uh, fiat currencies. We look forward to that. And I think you wanted to speak a little bit about, uh, about something a little more on the spiritual plane as far as people becoming offended and how that impacts? Well, something that I've noticed in, on a couple different fronts as a dynamic that happens when things begin to shift, some of the, the things to be aware of is that people you'd hope would pull together and realize that they're fighting a common enemy can start infighting. And it, it's not necessarily even triggered overtly by the enemy, but he, he knows all too easily easily that we fall into this trap. Uh, it's just whenever you get offended at the way that your brother is acting, you can or you you can either join with them in their offense or you can resist their offense um, in a good way or in a bad way. You can, if you resist their offense in a good way, what, what I mean by that is that you refuse to be offended yourself and you don't pick up the, their offense, but you may recognize that their cause is valid, but recognize that when somebody is operating in a spirit of offense, they are becoming their own worst enemy. They actually you know, shoot the, your, yourself in the foot and when you come off like you're offended, you don't have a winning posture. You have, you raise all kinds of questions in the minds of people that might otherwise support you, questions that make them think that, well, maybe the other guy is right, because you sure seem like you're not a very nice person to deal with and maybe you deserved it. So these kind of things that uh, people pick up and if somebody's moving in a spirit of offense the best thing is a cooling off period and hopefully they can begin to see that their communication patterns are fallen into the, in a bad way. They're not, they're not going to be effective. 
So that cooling off period can be difficult for uh, for somebody that should be a brother to help them see that because they might just turn on you and say, well, you're not supporting me, I'm done with you, and then there's potential for the cause, the movement, the, the fight for truth and justice to to splinter and fragment, and that's something that the enemy enjoys and recognizes all too easily. So really, it, that's how, why it's so important to us, for us to have a non-offendable spirit and to move in peace and love and not to take up that spirit of offense. We, uh, we actually kind of had an object lesson in that this week. Not at very close range, but at a little distance. Just were able to watch somebody who had been offended and who reacted to the extent that uh, they were not effective and are not being effective in communicating their point of view, which is actually a very good point of view, but it just uh, it doesn't work, as Don said. When you're when you have that offended tone, people just don't don't want to listen to you. It, it, the walls go up, and you tend to <laughs> insult other people too. Uh, moving into pearl culture, we uh, we did watch some films this week. Some were quite interesting. And I'll let Don talk about Frank and Jesse because I know he particularly enjoyed that, although I did too. Frank and Jesse is about Frank and Jesse James, and they were pretty well known outlaws in their day, near well, at, right after the Civil War. And so you might even say, you know, picking up on what we were just talking about, the spirit of offense thing, that they, they were carrying the spirit of offense of the South in the Civil War and uh, then be, recognized that the robber barons in the north running the railroads were kicking people off their land and began to fight for the underdog and became popular outlaws in Missouri and, and the surrounding area. So you definitely have their sympathy in the film, but you do see that, that Frank and Jesse have an interesting dynamic. The, Frank is the older brother and Jesse is the younger, but Jesse's more famous, partly because Frank purposely gave him the publicity, but Frank was much more wise in his implementation of their their goals of really robbery they would one of the interesting things you see them rob a train and they're they're they begin to rob the passengers not just the bank that is, the, is carrying money on the train and he looks I, I think it's I can't remember which of the brothers looks at one of the man's hands and says oh you're a working man I'm not going to take any money from you so you might say, oh, well, that's class warfare. But this is one of the things that Americans have used to be able to easily recognize and don't so much anymore, is they recognize that there is a predator class that uh, feeds off of the working man. And that comes out loud and clear in the, the movie of Frank and Jesse, that their, their targets are this predator class of, of people. And it's, it's a well-acted film, it's a pretty well historical from the research that I could do. And I enjoyed the portrayal. You, you definitely have some sympathy towards them, but recognize that in many ways Jesse did go too far and in some ways got what uh, he deserved, what was coming to him. And uh, they, you know, didn't end up good for Jesse it did end up good for Frank. He lived to a ripe old age and he was able to be victorious in the charges that were brought against him. Um, so it, it is interesting how things play out and I did enjoy the movie. I also enjoyed the movie quite a lot. It was nicely done and uh, it was enjoyable to see, uh, first of all, that, that period of time following the Civil War that's a movie other than Gone with the Wind. And uh, also that the, the freedom fighter point of view uh, in terms of um, the conflict between the North and the South and what was imposed on the South following the war as losers. We also watched a film with Kevin Spacey and Danny DeVito called The Big Kahuna. And uh, if you appreciate sales culture, 
you'll probably enjoy the film. If you appreciate Christian culture, you will probably enjoy the film because it is about how salesmen integrate their faith into their their work. So I find it very interesting. I don't think it held Don's attention through the whole thing. You know, I'm just not a salesman, so I I couldn't get drawn in by the 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 whole discussion of different sales tactics and what was okay and what wasn't. But uh, Cindy kind of summarized something for me that made a lot of sense in terms of what the movie was teaching. The the young man is really a believer and is trying to sell Jesus. The older men tell him that, that, that he is selling, that that is what he is doing. He doesn't fully acknowledge that, but later I think that does come to realize it and the older men are actually much more aware of what the real message of the gospel is because there comes a scenario later in the movie where they have to live that out or get the opportunity to live that out through each other. So they don't seem to be as religious but in many ways they're better at walking out the, the faith walk than the younger man. So it's interesting from that perspective. We saw a film called The Smell of Success about a woman who inherits a manure business and uh, I don't have a very strong opinion of that film. It was, it was entertaining. It does have uh, good actors in it and um, it's interesting what, the, what they've done. There's some, some scenes that I think are CGI. It's, it's kind of a blend of reality and CGI, kind of like 300, although the, the tone of the film is nothing like 300, but I think the production value is something like 300. So did, did you enjoy that? It's a comedy. Did you, did you find it funny, amusing? I think it, was, it, it made a few points, but I think it was kind of a one-joke film, you know, about everything being shitty and <laughs> stuff like that. You do hear, you do learn something at the end. I thought it was, this was probably historically true. I haven't re researched it if it's not. Store High in Transit is the acronym that, <laughs> <laughs> because of what happens to manure when it is too low in the ship where it gets moist. So that, but there's also some interesting, there's an interesting confrontation and this takes place in the 50s or early 60s between a, a more modern fertilizer production, which is the the sparkly clean NPK nitrogen potassium phosphorus type of fertilizers that are competing with the manure company, and there are some negative side effects to this, which are grossly exaggerated in this comedy, but tend to think tend to make you think that the the people that made this film were aware of some of the the side effects of modern agriculture that are anti-health and it was kind of in a subtle way and joking way promoting the old-fashioned use of manure as fertilizer and so it was it was interesting from that standpoint the CGI stuff is basically the backgrounds the the scenes in the background so I got the, the feeling that this thing was probably acted in a studio and then the backgrounds were were put in later and the, the the actors are normal looking people billy bob thornton's in it he's good of course and it's it's interesting um it's not i would rate it a b it's not a must watch but it's enjoyable yeah dare we say it seems like he's referring to monsanto and you'll probably get that as you watch the film we also saw a film that uh, seemed to me to be an allegory of the pharmaceutical industry and the film is called Miss Nobody and this late young lady happens to work for a pharmaceutical company and she begins to get this idea that she can climb the ladder of success by killing people. Now, if that doesn't sound like Big Pharma, I don't know what does. Um, and also, there there are some drugs that they, they actually mention a little bit how the um, pharmaceutical companies figure in a certain number of deaths when they, when they put a drug on the market. And this is a comedy, not a heavy film at all. It's very light. It is a black comedy, and I typically don't enjoy black comedies. 
but this one was it, it just wasn't that heavy and I'm not saying that your children should watch it but I I found it I found it palatable and and amusing some of the ways that the people die are kind of comical so and you know that it's not real so it's 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 fun it's interesting and it is if you take it at an allegory level it makes you think yeah and and it's a karma movie too which is all, it's always good to see uh, reaping and sowing we saw a film called all the way and that is about uh, a booking agent who uh, was trying to book Frank Sinatra for a show down in Australia. That didn't hold my attention too much. Um, I did was watching it in the background while I was doing something, and I can't. It, it appeared to be good. It was interesting to see Dennis Hopper as Frank Sinatra. It said he, he appeared to do a good job. And then uh, we watched an older film called The Muse, and this has a tremendous cast. It's Sharon Stone and Albert Brooks and uh, uh, Andy. There are a couple of directors that, show, that make cameo appearances. And, uh, and my comment was, uh, they don't really make movies like that anymore. It's not that old. I think it's from the 90s. But it's just lighthearted and fun and people not taking themselves too seriously. And it's so much fun to watch. Yeah, it's enjoyable. The basic premise of it is is that the, the character that is played by Sharon Stone, who is the muse, gives inspiration to her, to different people in Hollywood, and she's sort of for hire, but she doesn't sit down with them and give them ideas per se, but she just goes by the basis of her inspiration, and uh, in in terms of steering their thoughts, and then they have things that awaken in them that they attribute to her but it's really just about letting the creative process have free reign so it's interesting there there's some surprises at the end which i won't give away but it really makes for an interesting and fun film yeah it's very fun i hope they start to make more films like that again as this darkness kind of gets chased back into some corners instead of being preeminent in the center of our culture and society but uh this is probably about the end of our St. Patrick's Day 2012 video. Do you have any final comments you'd like to make? Go in victory. We are victorious. The good guys win.